Welcome everybody to another uh, interview on Joseph Henry Sharp. Today we're visiting via Zoom with Jim Vogel and um, Jim's gonna tell us a little bit about the painting he, he painted and maybe about the inspiration. Uh, also, uh, Jim, if you could tell us anything you learned new about uh, Mr. Sharp's work, uh, that would be great as well. But let's start off with the painting that you painted and okay. we can talk about that. So you can see the comparison side by side there, and I've got the original behind me as well. Um, Sharp's original piece is, is titled uh, The Old Santos Minder, and Santos meaning the bultos, the, the crucifix that the, uh, the guy's painting on. And uh, what I learned is that this gentleman, I can't remember his name, but uh, Sharp, knew him and he was kind of a jack of all trades. He was a classic New Mexican Leroy. He could fix anything. He could look at a problem and solve it. And uh, so he wasn't necessarily a Saint Carver. Like he wasn't a Santero, a traditional Santero like we think about. Right. But he would fix things. And so in this particular instance, um, I imagined that, you know, Joseph Henry Sharp was visiting this, this viejo and wanted to see what he was working on and he saw him working on this piece. And what struck me about it, well, there's two things. Uh, the first thing is the interior of the guy's studio or slash workshop. I mean, I can tell that Sharp stood there and he took it all in. And it's a real studio. It's not a staged thing. It's not a, let's imagine what a, a workshop should look like. I mean, you can see he's got broken window panes. He's got stuff lined up on the shelf. There's spilled paint. Um, he's even got a little cigarette going on the edge of the workbench. What I really appreciated is that I could tell that like, like artist to artist, Sharp stood there and he was probably super enamored with this guy's studio. And- Well, it, it, looks, it looks a lot like Sharp's studio. If you saw the old pictures, of all the props he had all over the place, it was right. a, it was a very visually a busy place. Yeah, and and I think that's what like Sharp picked up on here. It's like, oh, this guy's like me. You know, he's got things on the shelf that he was working on, or just something he's been collecting, and um, and as another kind of semi clutter full artist, that that struck me as as uh, genuine. Yeah, I, uh, the other thing I like about it is that you captured the patina on the old adobe. That was probably lead paint cracked yeah. in the beard. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, and then the other thing, like for me, as you well know, is um, I'm not a cowboy and Indian painter. And Sharp's overall is like a lot, a lot of Indian portraiture. Yeah. Native American portraiture. And within that realm also, though, he has this thing that I noticed about him that has always struck me is he liked to work in interiors. So if it was the interior of a workshop or a, you know, a little adobe room or a teepee, Sharp liked to try to figure out how to make light work within a, a closed interior space. And I imagine that he was kind of enamored with that. Yeah. You know, like, how do I do that? How do I show backlighting? How do I get that warm firelight glowing on their face? So whether it was a, an old time New Mexican Santero or a, a, a native elder, he over and over would place them in interior spaces. And it's almost like it's an environmental portrait. He put them in their space and would use that space to convey about who they were. Yeah, it's just I, not a portrait of your face. It's your face in your bedroom. Yeah, I, one, of my, one of my favorite scenes is him painting a, a native near a, a Kiva fireplace. Yeah. You know, with the, with the light glowing. And uh, we we're just yeah. interviewing uh, Dennis Siminski and talking about his uh, expertise in use of light and how he, he captured that pretty good, like the light coming through the leaves. Yeah. Uh, all and stuff, you know, it great, great. Yeah, but that's it. And Another reason I picked this one is because it's one of the few um, depictions that Sharp did of, of the Hispanic New Mexican. Yeah. 
and he was pretty like you mentioned his name to somebody and they're going to picture a native american portrait and this was one of the few instances that i found that he focused on a norteño yeah and the other thing is he knew this guy like you can tell there's like a relationship and he actually appears in a couple other images like there was an engraving he did of a I think it was about a Chimayo weaver mm. and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking that's the same guy. <laughs> and, Could be. and what it makes me think is like, he really was one of those Jack of all trades. You know, he could do anything. He could fix anything. People would bring in their wagons probably. And he would. Well, well, a lot of our, I think a lot of our culture, the Hispanic part, especially was we're just wired that way for some reason, you know? Yeah. You don't throw it away. You fix it. Yeah. And then we become hoarders and you have this big pile of crap. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't fixed it yet. And it's been 40 years, but I might. I need it out there. You just described my father pretty good right there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I, maybe you should take me over there and go through his junk pile, Leroy. Yeah. Well, man, there's some stuff to find in there. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Jim, I appreciate you taking time uh, today and talking about your painting. It's a beautiful one. I, 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 there's not a painting uh, that I don't like that's coming through on the show. And oh, that's great to hear. Yeah, it's interesting to see everybody spin or what they're doing, and it's all different angles. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. really appreciate you doing this particular image. And uh, well, you're welcome. Thank well, you, Roy. Yeah, thank you. Take care, Jim. And nice talking to you. I will. It's good to talk to you too. Yeah.